Welcome to another episode of the Limbs Praxis podcast, where we explore the holistic life, the full life, and the good life. Today, I want to talk about napping, the idea to sleep midday, to have a short sleep midday. I think this is often underused also because many work environments don't really allow people to uh, do a nap in the office or at the construction site. Yeah, people that work from home, they can do that. Some people, when they are having appointments and going a lot around with the car, you see sometimes people doing that, having a nap in the car. And I am personally napping for many years and I find it highly valuable. Napping acts as a brain refresher. In that sense, it's close to meditation and it can be to, in a sense, be very close to each other. And I talk about this in a moment. Napping also acts as a divider, as a divider of the day. And that's uh, connected with this brain refreshment. Like you shut down for a moment and then you restart and then a second part of the day starts. So let's look technically how a nap usually works. A nap is usually between 5 to 25 minutes long. It shouldn't be longer usually and the reason is that then it takes you a long time to um, to restart again. Yeah, You go in too much of a deep sleep. There might be scenarios where it can make sense to sleep longer and I also sometimes do this like if I had uh, let's say a very uh, very tiring days and then maybe also didn't get enough sleep at night I might put another hour of sleep in mid day and then can also feel very refreshed so that works but the typical thing for a nap is something around 5 to 25 minutes when i was younger <laughs> even younger than now <laughs> then uh it happened to me a few times that i was so tired from the training that i did i did very intense training session in the morning and then did a nap that i just completely fell asleep and just woke up two hours or sometimes even three hours later and then the rest of the day was also basically gone because it took me so long to get into my full energy again. So that I don't recommend. And the way I made sure this doesn't happen to me is that first of all, to have a very clear appointment after. That's good. That you have really a reason to get up if you're prone to nap too long and uh, to then do the nap close to this appointment yeah so let's say at two o'clock uh, there is a call you have with someone then you do your nap at 1 40 so you have 20 minutes or maybe 15 minutes and five minutes to transition and like this it doesn't happen that you nap for two long so that was definitely an important thing for me nowadays it happens less that i uh, nap longer than i want but i guess other people will uh, be in a state where they might have this problem in a nap you don't necessarily need to fall asleep that's a skill by the way if you are practicing napping, you get will get better at this to fall asleep quickly. Yeah. But you don't have to fall asleep. The important thing is that you completely relax. And this is why I say it's similar to meditation. So just now, before I recorded this episode here, I was doing sort of a nap, but not lying down. I was more sitting on a chair but a quite a relaxed chair yeah, where I could easily whoosh, relax my body completely and I completely relaxed my mind and then there might be some thoughts running through but you really feel how 
there's no tension anymore in the head yeah and then i just spent some time like this i didn't look at the time yeah it doesn't matter it can be as little as just a few minutes or if you really train it can be as little as just a few seconds to go in the to the state of complete relaxation and it already has an effect yeah basically the nap uh, a style of nap where your eyes are just dropping down and then opening up and that's your nap that would be a very advanced thing that ob obviously doesn't have the same effect like when you nap for 25 minutes but you can have an effect even in such a short time and it, it is about your ability to relax fast yeah and to go into this poof, state where uh, you let go of everything that's the important thing you need to let go of everything and it might be that you have some open loops still in your head and it, it takes some minutes yeah and maybe it takes five minutes maybe it takes even 30 minutes so then you will probably not be able to fall asleep in a in a in a nap um but depending on the situation and your training it might be also possible to really go directly through into the relaxation napping can also make that you need less time to sleep during the night i'm a bit hesitant to say this because mm, many people already struggle a bit with yeah doing that well because they spend too much time in the evening watching i don't know netflix yeah or something like this so i'm hesitant to say this but if you nap you probably need also less time to sleep at night and i don't mean that when you nap 25 minutes you need 25 minutes less but it can be that when you nap 25 minutes that you need 50 minutes less during the night yeah that case is not 100 percent clear for me personally if that is this is a, a case for everyone or if it's the case for some people how it works completely but i want to mention it and definitely it's a thing for me that if i haven't slept enough during a night and then take a nap on the next day i function much better during that day the last important thing that i want to say about napping is that i personally think the state between being awake and falling and being asleep yeah this drowsiness state is a very very beneficial state and it's also something i'm using for many years and for many different things for creativity but also for practicing in this drowsy state i've practiced various coordinative patterns in my mind and vastly improved them also in the real performance because of this something i've talked a bit before uh, and on various occasions the ability to train movement in your mind and it's a state that is apparently from what i here and there picked up also used by other creatives and also inventors through history um, there's this one idea that I read somewhere about yeah, having something in your hands and you're on a chair and you have something on your hands and when you fall completely asleep your hands open and the object falls down so you are waking up again and you're going back to this drowsy state so some people are even deliberately trying to stay as long as they can let's say in this drowsy state because it is such an yeah powerful powerful is not a good word uh, it's it's such a, a different state from the other states to be in and what happens there with the mind can be very useful for certain problems that you want to solve so drowsy state yeah that's not an either or and that's why it's not good this is a great state to spend some time in regularly and napping time can be also the time to spend 
in the drowsy state, fully or some of that. All right, so napping, very beneficial, especially for people that are doing demanding things in their life. If you're training, if you're learning, if you're creating, if you don't live your life on autopilot, I would advise you to consider to nap and also it acts as a separator, like I already said. So for me, it makes a lot of sense to take some minutes between my work and my, uh, how do I say, free time. Yeah, that doesn't necessarily mean I, that you fall asleep, but to take this five minutes, there can be five minutes of doing nothing. There can be a meditation, but I like a lot to go into this fully let go state, let go of the working stuff, let go of my mind, of my brain, of the work that is happening there, let go of uh, physical strain, let go of everything for a few minutes, something like five minutes can be totally enough to from there switch into another part of the day. All right, so shorter episode again also good i know some of you really like this short episodes that are very much uh, to the point so i'm doing both longer and shorter don't forget free riders are the biggest problem in any society <laughs> i'm just <laughs> making things up like this so it sounds super super strong so consider uh, to become a Patreon member. I wonder if, if I do it like this, it's motivating to uh, for people to become Patreon members or if it creates resentment and the opposite. I just play with it, as you know. I just say things uh, purposefully a bit stronger for the drama. <laughs> but I'm also open to realize that it might be not the way. But who knows? Human psychology is very, very complex all right and continue